It's great to have you with us today and take it away. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank NGLCC and uh, especially Sabrina and Jonathan for this opportunity and for helping me prepare for today. As Sabrina said, I'm a transformation coach. I work with individuals and organizations going through really big change. So in a way I have experienced um, what we're going through uh, in different forms with clients for many, many years. Most people that I talk with these days feel something like this boat out on the open waters, tossed and turned, not having a whole lot of control, not knowing what's coming next. I'm gonna start this webinar with a story. And the story is about Superstorm Sandy. The facts about Superstorm Sandy are on the left side of the screen. The experience of Superstorm Sandy is on the right. I live in Hoboken, New Jersey, right across the river from New York City. The picture on the right is one I took directly across the street from the front of my apartment building. Superstorm Sandy came in at night. Within a very short time, we lost electricity, we lost heat, we lost phone service, we lost cell service. Our city flooded. This is the picture looking out of my apartment window the next day. You can see across the street here, some of that the water has already begun to re recede. Some of those half flooded areas of, of buildings were people's homes. There were actually two garage doors to that parking garage structure on the right. The second one, which is off the screen, ended up about four blocks away. I have a friend who woke up floating on his mattress in his bedroom. We couldn't leave the building for about two or three days. It felt like the world was upside down, very much like a lot of people have been feeling these last six weeks or so. When we did leave and I started to walk around, there was damage and destruction anywhere. The, the picture I began with is just one of hundreds that I have. When I got up to the north end of the city, uh, there's an inlet. And the inlet is actually between this sailboat and the, the tan building in the background. Um, a lot of people anchor their sailboats in the inlet. Here is one of those sailboats a half a mile away from where it was anchored. It's still attached to its buoy. The buoy is still attached to the anchor, but the anchor wasn't strong enough to hold the boat in place. As I got further up to the inlet itself, there were several sailboats that had sunk. The anchor was strong enough. The connection between the boat and the anchor was strong enough, but not enough adjustment had been made between the anchor and the sailboat to keep it safe. And then there were other boats that were just dancing around on the surface as if nothing at all had happened. This really got me uh, thinking about how I felt my whole world was upside down, but it wasn't. I had no heat, I had no electricity, I had no phone service, I had no cell service. I was trying to charge my cell phone with a, a hand generator and it didn't work. And when I did get it charged, most of the cell towers were out anyway. But my world wasn't upside down. I had my son here. I still had my apartment. I still had my morning practice. We had food to eat. Yeah, we couldn't cook, but you know what? That was okay, we had prepared for it. We had food to eat. This really made me think about the fact that 
people in, in this way are sort of like these sailboats that I've been picturing. Um, we have anchors that are below the surface of our lives. They're most of the time out of our consciousness. But just like the anchors on sailboats, they help provide a sense of stability and security. When the owner of the sailboat goes back, she knows that sailboat is going to be where she left it. But during times of turbulence, we need to lift our anchors up. We need to look at them and make adjustments. Some of them we may have to hang tighter to. Some of them we may have to let go of. Some of them we may have to loosen or, or tighten up. So what are these anchors? I classify them as in, in terms of beliefs, people, traditions, things, ways of doing and ways of being. And in a minute, I'm going to give you some examples. Um, it's, it's the last two on that list that I really want to call out though, because they're the hardest for us to identify. Um, they're about how we show up. They're about um, who we are in our own lives to ourselves and to others. Um, they're in our very often our muscle memory and, and our neural networks. So finding them takes more work and I'll get to how we do that work in a few minutes. So I'm not going to read this, but, but here are a few examples of personal anchors. And what I would ask is uh, for all of you to type into the Q&A some of your uh, own personal anchors. What gives you a sense of stability and security? And it may be something that's been disrupted by the pandemic, or it may be something that is still very stable in your life. I love this. We're work. seeing work, family and faith, Peroni, meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, feel free to keep on, on sharing those. As I began to think about this as a metaphor for the transformational work that I do, I started to research anchors and I discovered that there are really two different kinds of anchors. There's the one that's pictured here that we're all familiar with. It comes in different sizes and shapes. Um, when I was a kid, it was a rock tied to a rope tied to the rowboat out in the middle of the lake so that we didn't drift away. Um, but it's an anchor that goes down to the seabed, the lake bed, the, the river bed, and holds the boat in place. But when things get really turbulent, when things feel like this, when, when the boat itself, literal boat itself, is out in the middle of the open sea, you can't drop an anchor to the bottom of the ocean. So they have invented what are called sea anchors. And I have, you know, science is not my major. I have no idea how the physics of this works. But what's important about the sea anchor is that it keeps the boat facing into the turbulence so that it doesn't capsize. So it's not necessarily held in one place. It moves with the storm, but it keeps facing into the storm so it doesn't capsize. So before we go any further, um, I'd really like to invite any questions that anybody has about what I've covered so far. While folks are asking questions, it's great to see so many answers coming through. My dog keeps coming through, which I couldn't agree with that more. Legacy TV shows who characters whose characters seem like old friends. I love that. 
family, work, jigsaw puzzles, my supportive partner and her positive attitude, gardening, walking, meditation, uh, scheduling time to talk with friends and over Zoom. That's great. Working on my business. Okay, we don't have any, any questions coming in, so let me move on here. I want to give you a little bit about the neuroscience of why Anchor's work is so important. The prefrontal cortex, which is sort of behind the forehead as shown in, in this illustration, is the newest part of our brain. Um, from an evolutionary perspective, um, also in terms of the development of the embryo uh, and, the, and the fetus. It's the last part of the brain to develop. In fact, there's some recent research that says it doesn't fully integrate into the brain until late teens or, or early to mid 20s, which there's some thinking now is why teenagers can do such stupid, stupid things. Because this is the site of our uh, more reasoned thinking, our innovation, our uh, problem solving, our higher decision making, our creativity. It takes one tenth of a second to trigger the prefrontal cortex. Uh, that means the electrochemical activity in the brain um, feeds the functioning of the prefrontal cortex. In the back lower part of our brain is the primitive brain uh, including the amygdala. The amygdala is uh, the home of the fight, flight, freeze, appease response. When the amygdala is triggered, its electrochemical activity precludes accessing the prefrontal cortex. In other words, when, when we're afraid, we're not thinking rationally. We can't, it, it, you know, neurologically, it just doesn't work. What's important about this is that fight, flight, freeze, appease response is triggered in seven hundredths of a second, three hundredths of a second faster. So it's important to get out of that fear-based mindset, if you will, if we're to think about anchors if we're to work with anchors and so forth and so on. Now one more piece of it that's important and not every neuroscientist will use this language but the facts they all agree on. We actually have three fully functioning brains. There is the brain in the head that I, I was just talking about it's called the cephalic brain it's by far the largest. And again, it's the seat of our creativity, our problem solving, our reason thinking, when we can access those. There's a cardiac brain. It has motor neurons, it has sensory neurons, it collects data, it stores data, it retrieves data, it analyzes data. It has the same kinds of electrochemical activity as the head in our brain, or I'm sorry, the, the brain in our head. The cardiac brain is the seat of our values of passion and compassion. There's also a gut brain or enteric brain. The number of neurons in the enteric brain is about equivalent to those of a cat's brain. And the enteric brain actually extends from the esophagus to the other end of the digestive tract. It is the seat of our courage our self-protection, and quite literally, who we are at the core. So if you think about it, our values, our passions, even our compassion, our courage, who we are at our core, these are some of those sea anchors for many of us. The three brains communicate through the vagus nerve. Um, its structure is such that about 90% of that communication is upward. The way I like to, to, to describe this, and this is not 
neuroscience language, this is my language, it's like the brain in our head is the central processor. But if the gut brain and the heart brain are sending messages up to our prefrontal cortex and the amygdala has been triggered, they can't get through. So one of the things that, that I do, that I work with my clients to do and, and what I'd like to invite you to join me in doing now is a breathing exercise that helps align the three brains, helps bring our sympathetic nervous system, which is triggered by the amygdala, and our parasympathetic nervous system, which offsets that all into alignment. So in, I'd invite you, if you uh, want to join me, to sit upwards with your feet firmly on the ground, to close your eyes, to, um, or, or let them gently uh, partially close and, and unfocus, if you will, and to place your hands above your heart. What's important about this exercise is that um, we create an even in and out count because as we breathe in, we're activating the sympathetic nervous system. As we breathe out, we're activating the parasympathetic. So I invite you to breathe in for a count of six and out for a count of six. And as you breathe in and out, focus your attention on your heart. And I'm gonna move us through more quickly, but typically when I do this, I maintain this focus on my heart until you, it's, it's like that feeling sometimes when you're about to fall asleep and your whole body sort of shifts into a different state and you can actually feel that shift. And then I'll move my hands up above my forehead and maintain that six breath in and six breath out count. Focus your breath up into your prefrontal cortex. When you're ready, move back to the heart and repeat your breathing into your heart again and then down to the gut. And finally back up to the heart. And when you're ready, come on back. So again, before we move on to how you actually do your anchors work, uh, are there any additional questions? We'll wait for those to roll in, but I feel about 20 times more calm after doing that than, <laughs> than I felt in a while. So I love that exercise. And during those difficult points in the day, I'll definitely be deploying that as a, a moment to guide my anchors. It's, uh, thank you, Sabrina. It's um, an exercise that I do before I get online with a client every time. Very often an exercise that I will start um, working with the client during our coaching sessions. Um, and it's one that you can develop a skill in, if you will, so that, you know, that day that we are back on the subway or um, you know a crowded bus, it's an exercise that you can do 
without the physical motion and it, it will s still work. That's, uh, that's amazing. And I'll definitely be using that and I'm seeing folks here say this is good stuff. And we have another person that says that exercise is one that has helped me so many times when my anxiety comes up. Um, and we have a question that says, how long do you usually do this? So I probably give myself at somewhere between three and five minutes before a coaching session, because I really, I want to let go of anything and everything that's come at me for the day. Um, but sometimes, you know, I have one client who um, is a healthcare provider and will use this exercise for maybe 15 seconds in the hallway between uh, one patient room and the next. I can imagine that now more than ever, that's definitely needed in the healthcare space, so. Uh, yeah. One of the things when, when I learned about the heart and the, the gut brains um, that I've really found value, valuable about that, um, even beyond what we're talking about here, is so often you'll meet business owners that say, I just want to make a re rational decision. I, would, you know, I don't want to let my emotions get in the way or you know, my gut's telling me a bad idea, but the numbers all look right or whatever, um, you know, when your heart and your gut are talking to you, if they're talking about the things that they are good at, there's a reason you should listen to them. And when I explain that to the business owner, um, they'll very often start paying more attention to their heart and their gut as well as what the numbers tell them. Okay, so um, after this webinar, and, and Jonathan or Sabrina will, will tell you how, um, but you're going to have access to two guides and templates. One is for doing this work at the personal level. The other is for doing this work at the organizational level. Uh, the anchor categories are the same. Um, the actual process is the same. Some of the questions are different and, and the guides have questions for each step in the process. Um, and they have examples around each of the categories of anchors. And I'm going to show you screenshots of those uh, toward the end of the webinar. But the first process is to really inventory your anchors. So, you know, who are those people in my life? who help give me a sense of security, a sense of stability, a sense of control. Um, what are those things? What are my traditions? What are my uh, religious beliefs or practices? Uh, what is it about uh, how I do things? Um, what is it about uh, how I show up, how I'm being? Um, and I'll, I'll give you an interesting example um, from one of my early workshops um, where I was doing this online and uh, sent people into the breakout rooms. This one gentleman came back and he said, I'm a Wall Street lawyer. For 25 years, I've gone into the office wearing a suit every day. He said, now all of a sudden, I'm going into my home office every day. For the first two weeks, I was lost. I did nothing. I go into my home office, I close the door, I pick papers up, I put them down, I open files, I close them, I go online to look something up and forget what I was looking for. I was totally non-productive. Then one day I got up and not thinking, I put on my suit and I went into my home office. And all of a sudden I felt like I was in control. I could do things and I started becoming more productive. And what I love about the story is he, he then said, 
So now I have returned to another tradition. It's not 25 years old, but it's been going on for several years now. Before I leave my home office at the end of the day, I text my wife to tell her I'm coming home. So your anchors are yours, they're personal. You need to begin by inventorying what they are. And again, the guide and the template will take you through that process. Then you need to identify what your C anchors are. What adjustments need to be made? Do you need to strengthen something? Do you need to let go of something? Um, do you need to hold it tighter, let it looser? Um, do you need to reconnect like this gentleman reconnected with wearing his suit to the office? Do you need to reconnect to an anchor that was ripped away when all this happened? It's important to prioritize the essential adjustments over the ones that are a good idea to make because we can't handle an infinite amount of change. None of us can. And finally, you need to give yourself permission. And I'm going to give you some examples of what I mean by that as I walk through the next um, slides here. So this is an example of mine. I've been in this apartment, I'm in Hoboken, New Jersey. I'm in the same apartment I was during Superstorm Sandy. I'm on the top floor of an 1890s uh, factory. Some of you will know what I'm talking about when I say the factory was built to manufacture slide rules. Um, the factory slide rules are no longer manufactured. The factory was converted actually back in the uh, 1980s, I believe, into apartments. I love it. I have these huge factory size windows facing uh, Jersey City and facing Manhattan. As I look out from my desk to the southeast, I can see the World Trade Center. If I walk across the, the room and look to the northeast, I see the Empire State Building. I have a wood burning fireplace. I have huge skylights. Um, I love my apartment, but I've never had to stay in my apartment the way I do now. So the decision was made, I need to make it feel less cluttered. After all, this is a New York City size apartment. The permission I needed to give myself was to let go of things that no longer have meaning to me. Another example, one of my clients graduated from NYU, where he was a fraternity brother. While they were in school, a bunch of them used to go out every Thursday night drinking. 10 years later, they were still going out Thursday nights drinking. It was the boys' night out. Well, as of March 17th in New York City, there was no going out drinking. So the group of them decided they were going to do a Thursday night, a boys' night in and they all get on Zoom and drink together and tell stories, et cetera, et cetera. Well, he decided that it was time to let go of this anchor, that given everything else, he wanted to spend this time with his family. So he decided he was gonna call each one of them, but he didn't feel the same about everyone. There were a few he wanted to stay connected to. And so he gave himself permission to not treat all of the Boys Night Out fraternity brothers the same. A third example. For probably 16 or 17 years now, I've been getting up at 4.30 in the morning for morning practice. Meditation and prayers, stretching, um, it's a way for me to gain that centering before going into the day. It's a way for me to feel, not feel like I am rushing into the day to meet somebody else's expectations of me. That relationship hasn't changed. This is a sea anchor for me. I take it wherever I go whether I'm in a hotel, when I'm, whether I'm visiting and staying with friends, 
whether I'm home, whether I'm out, um, you know, when I was out uh, trekking in the Himalayas, this came with me. I've had to make some adjustments. I need, some, I need more sleep now. The stress of the world, even with everything that I do to uh, withstand it, if you will, means I need more sleep. So I've adjusted my wake up time. I've adjusted my prayers in order to um, address what's going on in my life, in my son's life, um, and in the world around me. So I'm going to take a break here again for any questions we've got, Sabrina. See if we've got anything coming through. And Brian, while we're at the half hour mark, I'm going to just take this moment to welcome anyone who has joined in since we began. And thank you for joining NGLCC for our webinar Wednesday is currently in progress. Uh, a reminder that anyone who has questions throughout can use the Q&A feature to submit. Uh, Sabrina will relay those on, uh, return our program back to our outstanding presentation and guided by uh, NGLCC SVP, Sabrina Kent. Thanks, Jonathan. It looks like we uh, are paused on questions at this point, but you know, one thing I was thinking about and I didn't mention is, Brian, you are a regular contributor to Forbes, and I just wanted to say thanks for sharing your, your thoughts and your expertise with us. There's already so much that I know that I'm taking away personally for my life and also for my work life, so thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, I am going to move on. Um, As I said at the outset or, or earlier, um, you will get a, the access to two guides and templates. Um, each one has a set of directions like this that will guide you through um, I, helping to identify your anchors, uh, identifying your sea anchors and, and moving through the process. The templates themselves um, both use the same categories, um, but they have different examples. So this is a screenshot of the uh, personal anchors template. They are word templates so that you can go in and edit them so that they work for you and, and actually work with them uh, in Word if that is how you tend to work. This is the organizational, uh, uh, the, the same page, if you will, on the organizational template. I'm actually starting next week. In fact, I have a call with the people operations coordinator. Um, otherwise, you, um, in most organizations, known as the chief human resources officer, um, later this afternoon uh, for a, an international animal rights organization. And we're starting to roll this process out in that organization next week. Um, it's the same process, but what's important to remember um, when you're doing this at the organizational level, and you'll have this organizational template, um, some anchors are still very personal. You know, my workspace, that's, that's just mine. Some other people may be, or may not be attached to their workspace. Some anchors are associated with colleagues, not necessarily team members, not necessarily people in the same department or doing the same work function or whatever, but the people that you've been having lunch in the cafeteria with for the last 10 years. Again, at, at that level, they need to figure out collectively how best to adjust that anchor. You know, do they do lunch online five days a week or three days a week or do they let it go? Um, some organizational anchors are specific to a department or to a function or to a process. Um, and again, the most effective way 
to make any adjustments is through having people work collaboratively together to figure it out. Again, open to questions. I think this is great. And I love seeing that um, these, these different elements to incorporate, to bring them into your team. One of the things that we instituted at NGLCC, in fact, just did today for the first time was a, a team uh, lunch hour and just come if you can and stay as long as you wish. But it's just an additional way for us to connect outside of our regularly scheduled touch points and other day-to-day -day meetings. We did a yoga last week. One of our team members is a certified instructor. So that was really exciting. And um, we're looking at different ways to expand that as well to our broader you know, NGLCC community and family. So thanks for those, those tips. I um, recorded a webinar a few weeks ago with a gentleman who heads up a fairly significant organizational communications firm. And um, much of their work has always been virtual. But again, that has shifted um, even, even for those people who typically work virtually. And so he said they have started new Slack channels. So in essence, they have a, a, a virtual coffee pot or water cooler Slack channel. Um, they discovered that there's a lot of cat talk amongst people. And so they've started a cat talk Slack channel. So there are a number of ways um, to be creative about replicating what is no longer available or certainly is not available to us at this point. It's awesome. And it looks like we don't have any questions. So I guess we can move right along. Okay. So when we first started um, planning this, it, it, I had thought that we were going to be able to do breakout rooms and we can't. Um, so that would have taken up some of this time what I'm offering is to have a follow-up workshop where you can come in with your questions um, and we'll work them through. And I'm offering that next Thursday, May 7th at uh, noon Eastern. And if you're interested in registering for that, you can email me, brian at transforminglives.coach. Uh, also, and, and this is an offer that um, I have open at all times uh, for a complimentary coaching session. Uh, this uh, URL is in the, um, in the templates when you receive those. But I'm definitely offering you a complimentary coaching session and it does not have to be around anchors. It can be about anything that's important to you right now. Thank you, Brian. That's incredible and so generous. And I really, I really hope to see folks taking advantage of this offering. And um, just knowing how much I've gleaned from today's session, I, you might be seeing my email pop up in there as well. Great. So that is what I have for today. Um, again, I'm, I'm here for any questions. Folks, yeah, feel free to please utilize the um, Q&A or chat for any final uh, questions here for Brian. Otherwise, we can uh, give you just over 15 minutes back to your day. Well, while we're afraid to come in. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sabrina. Oh, we've got one question um, from Clay at Comcast. Brian and NGLCC, what an incredibly generous offering today and the follow-up consultation, very much appreciated. And um, Natasha says, thank you for your time and for your shares. So thank Great. you, Brian, again, from all of us at NGLCC and from our broader NGLCC family. Um, please folks, make sure you take a look in the chat box. Jonathan linked the handouts that were, message, uh, that were mentioned at the start of the program. And, Oh, it looks like we have um, a question coming in saying, any recommendation on managing anxiety in between meetings when you only have a couple of meetings? Or I think oh, they meant a couple a of minutes. Couple minutes. Center breathing. 
Um, also would recommend don't just sit in front of the camera waiting for the next meeting to start. Um, you know, get up and hug a loved one, pet the cat, um, you know, play catch with the dog. Do those things that you find are relaxing, even if you're only doing them for a few minutes. That's awesome. And one thing that I find helpful for those that have, you know, a Fitbit or an Apple Watch, I put on my breathing feature and you can do that for one, three or five minutes. And that's just a great way to be grounded and sort of flush out the energy from the last emails or meetings you were on and, and move into the next uh, portion. And uh, we have Clay saying, I'm hugging my husband more often than usual. That's awesome, Clay. We all need a little bit of extra hugging and loving right now. It's it's definitely a trying time. Um, so with that, folks, thank you all again so much for joining us. Brian, a virtual round of applause again for thank this you. fantastic presentation. Yes. And um, folks, a reminder that we do this uh, webinar Wednesdays program every single week. Our next one's going to be May 6th, and that's Entrepreneurship as a Creative Practice presented by Peter Krask. If you have interest in submitting your own webinar, go to nglcc.org slash webinars, and our team will reach out to get some time scheduled with you moving forward. If you have any questions or you need us to resend Brian's information or the handouts, email us at webinars at nglcc.org. Also, some of you may have joined us last week for our NGLCC LGBT Sip and Pitch Fridays program. Originally, that was to be held on the last Friday of every month, but given the success and your feedback of that program, we are now shifting that to a um, twice a month model. So stay tuned for our next program announcement that'll be coming in the coming days. Um, if you have interest in pitching your company as part of this informal program, you can go to nglcc.org slash slip and pitch to register. You can also email us at education at nglcc.org with any questions. Otherwise, Brian, thanks again for your time. Everyone, thanks for joining and we'll see you back next week. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Brian. Thanks everyone. Bye. Great job, Brian.